else. What's up? So many of you really liked my Kurumi doll that I made for Christmas and the demand in the comments to make my Melody doll was super high. So I thought what better opportunity to make my Melody than Valentine's Day. I know it's a bit late but good things take time. Also I would super appreciate if you leave a mic <laughs> leave a mic? Yeah, please leave a mic. <laughs> please leave a like, a comment for the algorithm and subscribe. It really helps the channel. But enough talk now, let's make this doll. Okay, so for my melody I'm going to use the same body as for Kurumi, but printed her in a light skin tone and Blue Pixie made her a super cute, unique face. After I strung her, she looks like this. She's so small, but her joints have an amazing movement range because they are all double joints, which I adore. How about we start with a wig today? I want to give her cotton candy pink hair and will again just use a jumbo braid. The texture of this hair is very rough, which is why I'm going to be straightening it. For that, I'm just going to use my hair iron on 140 degrees Celsius and go slow and carefully. After straightening, it's smooth and shiny. As you can see, I already made her a wig cap off cam from an old beige colored tights. I also turned all the pink hair into wefts and prepared those. With my trusty hot glue gun, I'm now starting to build the wig layer by layer. I like to use hot glue for wefts because it dries a lot faster than PVA glue and I'm always super impatient when it comes to glue drying times. The closer I'm getting towards the parting on top of the head, the smaller I cut the wefts to fill up all the gaps. When I finally reach the top, I fold around two tiny wefts like this with my iron and will now glue them onto the parting line. Looks good! Now I just need to glue the second parting piece. Ah, wig done! Haha, <laughs> I wish! Let's style those bangs. I will be using some hair gel and a brush and apply a good amount of gel onto the hair. I try to work it in as good as I can before taking a silicon paper strap, wrap it around the head and secure it with tape. This will be drying until the next day. 24 hours later. Alright, let's see if this worked. Yep, that's good enough for now. Now I just need to cut those bangs to the right length and braid her hair in two pigtails. I also decided to add some blue ribbons last minute to the hair. Isn't the wig just adorable like this? Okay, with the wig done, it's time for her outfit. I decided I wanted to give her an oversized sweatshirt dress and cut out the pattern from white velvet. I also gave the dress a heart-shaped cutout and will burn the edges off with my lighter first. This will prevent the fabric from fraying. Okay, let's give the dress a little print as well. Just like with Kurumi, I'm going to write her name onto her dress. And boom! Perfect! For the cutout, I'm now using some clear vinyl and a glitter nail polish. I'm spreading the nail polish on the vinyl and let it dry for a couple minutes. After it was safe for touching, I cut it out and will now place it underneath the cutout heart and secure it in place with my Uhu glue. While everything was drying, I came up with the idea of some gold detailing around the heart because <laughs> why not, right? I had these tiny golden half beads and just glued them around with some PVA glue. Perfect! Now let's make her sleeves. For the cuffs, I will fold these two jersey rectangles in half first and iron them. Then I take the sleeves that I cut from a glittery tool and sew the cuffs on finished sides in while pulling them tight. 
I will also be doing the same with a folded jersey strap around the neckline of the dress for a cute color. I sewed unfinished sets in. Looks good! Then I'm taking my sleeves and sew them on by hand, finished sides in as well. I also decided to glue on a little lace trim along the cuffs. Okay, let's fold the sleeve and side seams together, finished sides in and hem them. We are almost done with the dress. I just need to add a cuff to the bottom of the dress as well by sewing it on, finished sides in. And perfect! Last thing is to close the back about 2 inches from the bottom and add a closure. And with that the dress is finished. And it looks so cozy but also so glamorous. I'm so so happy how it turned out. Okay, so for her socks, I need to prepare this fabric. It used to have like glittery golden stars on it, but I don't know what happened. Everything is gone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out all these little pink stars and I'm going to iron them over all the spots on the fabric. They're all on. Let's iron them. Ah, I'm so glad that the ironing worked out. The stars are super cute and I can now cut out the stocking elements. Now I will first glue around top and bottom seam allowances with my trusty Uhu glue stick. After that I just have to fold them finished sides in like this and hem them together. And here are the finished leg warmers. I love those glittery pink stars so so much. I'm glad that it worked out. My Melody needs her little ears, right? So just like with Kurumi, I printed her ears on headphones with my Elego Mars 2 Pro printer. Let's remove them from the platform. Oh god! <laughs> For some reason, I always almost get hurt when trying to get them off. After washing and curing, they look like this and are ready to be painted. I'm going in with some pastel pink acrylic paint that I mixed and applied in multiple layers to get a smooth, brushstroke-free look. After that, I'm using my Posca marker for some white accents. Poscas have a great opacity, which is why I like to use them for crafting a lot. Looking good! Now just the blue ribbon is missing. Melody either wears a flower or a ribbon, but I like the ribbon a lot, so I went with that for this project. Now I just add some tiny golden accents with my liquid golden paint. And with that, the headphones are done. They really show which doll this is going to be and I love the look of them so, so much. Okay, midway through the process of making the doll, I ran out of time to make shoes. So I asked Blue Pixie if we could use the roller skates again that I also used for my magical girl. The feet are inside them already, so I just need to exchange her feet with these pieces now. I printed them on my Elego Mars and will now paint them. I first go in with some pink acrylic paint that will match her dress later. Painting elements like this takes longer than you would think, but it's also kind of therapeutic. After the pink was painted, I'm going in with some blue and some more pink for the tongue of the shoe. I also decided to paint over the white parts, since white paint is a little whiter than white 3D resin. Ooh, what a sentence. And then comes the best part, golden elements. I decided I wanted to paint the sole of her shoe golden, as well as the shoelaces. Okay, time to assemble the shoes. After painting the parts, I'm now going to insert a thick golden wire onto the holes of the sole, and then stick the wheels in place. Last but not least, let's glue the shoe onto the sole. And with that, the little shoes are done. And they for some reason fit so well. It makes me want to get into roller skating. How about we give my Melody a handbag? 
I found this clear candy in my stash and will first attach those golden elements with a little golden wire to the candy. Then I'm taking this glittery crafting ribbon that I bought at the dollar store and glue it into the golden bead thingies with hot glue. Now let's bedazzle the bag with some iridescent pink hearts and some teeny tiny little stars. I'm still known as the bedazzling queen. Awesome! I also found this little Kurumi figurine that used to be a phone strap, so why not just put her in the bag? Awesome! The bag is done and it's so darling. I love the spra- I wrote sparkly! <laughs> I love the sparkly details and it was really simple to make. Alright, the moment you've been all waiting for, the face! Let's start by dusting on some micro glitter all over the face which I sprayed with MSC before. I thought about giving my Melody a soft girl look because Kurumi has the more eager look so I went in with some blushing and by meaning I went in, I went in and spread it all over her cheeks and nose area. For her lips I decided to go with a cute pink as well to make it fit the aesthetic. Then I take a detail pencil and already sketched out one eye. Let's try to transfer that to the other side as well. As you can see, I like to turn the head in all different directions when doing that because it makes certain lines easier to draw. And here are the lines all sketched out. Now let's go in with some paint. I used diluted matte black acrylic paint for the eye lines. Very slowly I build them up and also carefully draw the lashes. Melody's face is so small and it was not easy to make all the lines smooth, but no pencil will ever be able to give you as clean lines as a brush and paint does. One eye done! Let's also paint her eyebrow as well. I'm using the same pink acrylic paint I used on her shoes and headphones and slowly build up the color. Now I just have to repeat everything on the other eye as well. I wish I could just copy mirror paste. Now for the fun part. I kind of felt like white freckles would look good, so I used some white paint, dot on some freckles and blend them with my finger. Then I'm adding another white heart to the cheek and also gave her some tiny golden accents. Let's get those pearly shimmers onto her cheeks and also gloss her lips and waterlines for a finishing touch. For Melody's eyes I wanted to use a different technique than for Kurumi, so I printed and cut out these eye bases I designed on shiny cardboard. Then I use my half sphere mold and fill in a bit of UV resin to the fourth biggest sphere. Then I sprinkle some glitter onto the resin and place the iris upside down on top of it. I cure it for 2 minutes and then add some white mixed resin, drip it into the mold and cure everything for a couple minutes under my UV lamp. Let's demold it! Oh, it's so so cute! The colors are so vibrant, I love it! Okay, so in the very last minute I thought it would be cute to maybe make a little candy box, so I will use this clear bead case that was empty and will glue these letters I cut out with my dad's Cricut. I peel off the transfer vinyl, place it on the lid, rub it on and peel off the clear vinyl. And then I use some white PVA glue and glue more iridescent pink hearts around the box. Now I just need to fill it with some leftover candies from my Lolita Fashion Smart Doll. And the candy box is all done. And with that sparkles, the doll is done. Are you ready to see the finished result?
And here is the little one. I'm head over heels for her because she turned out so, so cute. How do you like her? And should I make more Sanrio inspired dolls? Please let me know in the comments below. Also, thanks again to all of my patrons who make projects like this possible. Thank you so, so much. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video and have a beautiful, creative day. Bye.